From magazines to logos to the TV and film we watch, we're surrounded by visual media. You might be shocked to learn that most of it is trying to persuade you in one way or another. First things first, it usually helps to start with a definition. If rhetoric describes the way a written text moves us to feel or think or do something, what you may be wondering is visual rhetoric. Well, it's the way a text is trying to move you to feel or think or do something, only instead of words, or often in addition to words, it's through a visual medium. Visual rhetoric is made of the same stuff as your everyday garden variety rhetoric, but it employs pictures or video or even just the elements of visual and graphic design to persuade its audience. Visual rhetoric is made of the same building blocks as textual rhetoric. Ethos, logos, and pathos are still the tools that visual rhetoric uses. The addition of visual language to a text means it can communicate its rhetorical purpose a lot faster and more efficiently, and the visual elements can significantly change the impact of the message. Take this image, for instance. In both examples here, the written content is the same, but the difference in font very quickly communicates whether those words are meant as an endearment or as a threat. To put it another way, the visual elements change how we interpret the same text. Obviously, typography can change the meaning of a message, but what are some of the other elements in the visual rhetorical toolbox? The primary elements of visual rhetoric are spacing, value, color, line, scale, and texture. If you studied art or graphic design, you might recognize these as the main elements of design. Pretty much any image can be analyzed using these ideas. That's not to say that you have to be an expert in art to understand how these elements work, but the truth is, you already have a lot of expertise in recognizing these qualities. Let me prove it to you. Take this image for example. This is a screen grab from a film. Even if you don't recognize the film, I bet you can tell what genre it belongs to because those elements of design communicate a lot of information that you're already decoding constantly. In terms of spacing, look at how thick the woods are, so dense that not much sunlight makes it to the ground. The trees tower over the building. You can infer something about the relationships between the people in the image too, because of their spacing. They're standing close, so they're probably friends, not strangers. And you can likely guess that the two who are embracing are a couple. Value has a lot to do with contrast and hue. In this frame, the clearing is brighter than the woods around it, so it has a lighter value. The front door, though, is almost totally cloaked in darkness, which makes us feel uncertain or nervous. We don't like to enter sp a space that we can't see well. Color certainly relates to value. There are no bright, poppy colors here, and the woods and the ground and the cabin are all natural colors, greens and browns and tans. The group is costumed in colors that aren't natural, blues and mustard yellow and tan and white, so they stand out you can tell that they're not part of the landscape. Also, note how everything in the image is muted. It's all kind of dark. You can pretty much guess this isn't a comedy. Line refers to how the elements of an image draw your eye in certain directions. Here, the line of the roof and the bottom of the porch are the strongest lines, and horizontal lines often convey stability and groundedness. Although here, the other elements are undercutting a sense of stability. Because everything else in the frame, from the trees to the utility pole to the characters, is oriented in a vertical direction, this makes the cabin itself stick out. The contrast adds to how it makes us feel uneasy. Which brings us to scale. You can tell it's not a big cabin, it's single story, and it's dwarfed by the trees that extend up and out of the frame. But it still takes up most of the shot, and the people in front of it seem dwarfed by its visual mass. They're also isolated within that clearing, which adds to the sense of isolation that we can infer from this wooded location. And finally, texture. Because it's the lightest value, the dappled light is one of the most obvious textures in this image. The way that it filters through the trees subconsciously tells us that these woods keep going. The shingled roof on the top of the cabin is old and unkempt, and the texture of it echoes the texture of the dead leaves in the clearing on the ground. So against all of that organic natural texture, the characters stand out. And since this is the first time that they're seeing the cabin, all these elements combine to make it feel like they don't belong. Everything in the image is building to be a visual warning. 
all these elements are combining. To tell us that the genre this belongs to is, as you probably guessed it, horror. Specifically, this is an image from 2010's Cabin in the Woods. If you're a horror fan, you might have spotted that this cabin bears a strong resemblance to the cabin from Evil Dead. That's not on accident. The film is making a visual reference to a beloved cult horror film. There are other visual references throughout the film to other horror movies like Friday the 13th, Halloween, and Hellraiser. And those references are absolutely part of the visual rhetoric of Cabin in the Woods. It's persuading the viewer that it's part of the horror genre tradition. Okay, here's another example. Even if you don't recognize this show, what can you tell about it from this image? The bright and poppy colors, the charming buildings, the cobblestone street, and the warm tone all combine to tell us, even without any other context, that this is probably a comedy. In fact, it's a still from The Good Place, which I might argue is one of the best comedies. One more example. How about this? The business like attire, the fluorescent light fixtures overhead, the brick walls, this big whiteboard with evidence laid out on it. These are all visual elements of the police procedural. In this case, it's the TV show Castle, which centers on a police detective and a mystery writer who team up to solve crimes. It's on the funnier end of the police procedural spectrum, but the moody lighting and the somber colors would keep you from mistaking it for, say, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which is very much in the comedy realm. As you analyze visual media, remember that just like with textual rhetoric, the same elements of the rhetorical situation apply. Genre, author, purpose, audience, argument, and effect. Like in the examples from film and TV that I showed you, these aspects of the visual text help us identify the rhetorical impact of a text. And when they're combined with imagery that evokes an appeal to ethos, pathos, or logos, we can then start to parse the persuasive argument that visual texts make. Being able to spot how rhetoric functions in a visual text not only makes you more critically engaged with the world around you, when you can officially analyze the visual rhetoric in a text, then you can apply those principles to creation of your own visual texts to make your own arguments. Understanding visual rhetoric makes you a more persuasive writer and creator, which makes you a more effective communicator. Whether you're creating a resume to convince someone to hire you, or designing an invitation to a haute couture Halloween party, or pitching a proposal to your boss, being visually rhetorically savvy will help you achieve your goal.